Hello and welcome back to Wild Thistle Kitchen. My name is Anita and today I'm going to show you three sourdough discard recipes that I make all the time. Sourdough discard cinnamon rolls, sourdough discard banana bread, and sourdough discard sandwich bread. So first I'm going to make the cinnamon rolls. And like I said, I really do make these all the time, sometimes multiple times a week because my kids love them. I, everybody loves them. They are just like really so, so good. Um, so first I'm making, the recipe calls for milk, but I have really been on a mission to use up my buttermilk powder and it works really well in this recipe. I'll have to add a note to the recipe card on my blog that says you can use the buttermilk powder in this because it really does work so well. So I'm adding that, a slightly warmed water and I add the buttermilk powder to it and then some yeast, an egg, and some sugar. And I'm just using this little milk frother. I don't normally use this, but it works really well for the buttermilk powder. So I just was using it to mix that all up since I already had it dirty. And then once that yeast blooms a little bit, about five minutes, I add my sourdough discard. And this is straight out of the fridge this is just a jar i keep in there and whenever i feed my sourdough and i need to take some of it out which is the discard part of it i just add it to this jar and i use it in recipes all the time and then i mix that sourdough discard in and then add my flour it's about three and a half cups and this recipe is on my blog all three of these are I will link them down below and you can go to my blog and print the recipe out if you'd like. And then adding in some salt, some butter, and then I'm just gonna knead that all together with my stand mixer with the dough hook. You can make this by hand. Um, I just love the convenience of a stand mixer and a dough hook. I use it so, so often. We actually have three stand mixers and it is not because I have purchased three stand mixers. This big one I've had since my daughter was a baby, so it's been, gosh, 16 years. And my husband has had to tinker with it a couple times and fix it, but because um, I really use it a lot. But um, the other two, one was my husband's mother's, my mother-in-law's. She passed away and we got that mixer. And then the other white one was my dad's, same story. So we ended up with those two extra and I'm just keeping them. I use them sometimes but just keeping them for, you know, we have a lot of kids and one day they're gonna be off on their own and need these types of things. So anyway, back to the cinnamon roll dough. Um, this is after it rose the first time for about an hour. It gets nice and puffy. It's such a nice dough to work with. And then I just put it right on my uh, soapstone countertops. I don't even use flour usually unless it feels a little sticky. I kind of like when it sticks a little bit to the counter because it makes it easier to roll out and it'll stay in a nice big rectangle. So just rolling it out to a about a, maybe like a half inch thickness. I just get it thin but not like too too thin. And all these instructions are on the blog post, the specifics. And then I mix up some brown sugar, some butter, and some cinnamon. Spread that all over the dough. It's a pretty thin layer. And of course I tinkered with this before, you know, adding it to my blog. This is a variation of my brown butter cinnamon rolls. And this mixture, sometimes I mix it up like this and sometimes I just spread the butter on, sprinkle the sugar on and sprinkle the cinnamon. And it bo they both work really well. Um, just like I have learned not to make it a very thick filling because it'll just kind of ooze out in the oven. This is a nice thinner, mixture and it works out really well and it stays in the cinnamon roll. Just rolling it up here and unfortunately while I was filming this video I did not hit record when I was cutting these into rolls but on the blog post I have step-by-step -step photos and you can see how I do it. I just use a knife. Some people use dental floss. I do not. I just take a little serrated knife you see right there and slice it into 12 relatively even pieces and let it rise again for about 30 or so minutes 
covered and then bake it at 350 for 25 to 30 minutes and there they are they are beautiful they they just turn out beautiful every time it's one of my favorite recipes and certainly a big hit in this house and with anyone who ever gets them for birthdays or you know like my kids will take them to school sometimes to their jobs um they've just I actually used to sell a version of these once at a farmer's market and they were they always sold out they're just I can't say enough about them I'm very proud of them and they are so delicious and then here is a little glaze I make with some cream cheese some butter powdered sugar milk and vanilla bean paste or vanilla extract I just love those little vanilla flecks and I just mixed that up while the rolls were in the oven and I had it ready for them. I like to let the rolls cool just a little bit, maybe like five minutes, and then I put this on while they're still pretty warm. And there it is. It's it's kind of between a glaze and a frosting, I would say. It's not real thick, but it's not super, super thin like some glazes. I like when it has a little bit of structure to it and it'll kind of melt down into them so so good i hope you'll make this recipe um, it's linked down below and it is a highly beloved one around here so i hope it can become that in your home as well and then of course i had to show you some of the insides while they were still a little bit warm just that middle piece to me that is just the best part of a cinnamon roll right there soft fluffy sweet there's a like I think maybe if you think about it you can taste the sourdough discard it's like a little bit sour but it's not too sour like this doesn't taste like sourdough bread it's just a nice way to use up that discard and now moving on to the sourdough discard banana bread this is so good it's buttery it's not too sweet I only use honey to sweeten it and not a lot compared to most banana bread recipes and it's been a big hit on my blog ever since I posted it. So it's just some flour, some baking soda, baking powder, cinnamon. Those are the dry ingredients. Oh, a bit of salt. And then mash up some bananas. Usually I use three, but I only had two on this day. And it works out fine. It's pretty adaptable. And this is some really nice honey I get from Azure Standard. My pantry is pretty cold, so you can see the honey is pretty pretty cold there so I'm gonna melt that just a bit with some butter and then here I'm adding the sourdough discard a half a cup to the mashed bananas mix that around and then I'll add in that butter and honey mixture you can use coconut oil you can use really any kind of fat that you want to that has a neutral flavor um, but the butter is so good of course and then I added some vanilla couple of eggs mix that around I switched over to a whisk because I wanted to get it really mixed up and as you can see here this is a just a well basically a one bowl if you don't I always mix the dry ingredients but you actually could just dump them right in there and it would be a one bowl recipe and a, a whisk or a spatula so you don't need to drag out a mixer for this one and then I scoop it this time I'm actually making it into little muffins for Malcolm our toddler so this was the first time I did this and it was on camera so that was risky but it worked out really nicely they baked up so nice and fluffy and tender so yeah you can either bake one big loaf of banana bread or make lots of little muffins or of course you could make standard standard size muffins I just made the minis because they're cute and good for little baby hands so there they are all baked up and I just take them out so they don't get too steamy in the in the little muffin tins and they will disappear quickly around here so then the last thing I'm making the third recipe is my sourdough discard sandwich bread it's just a one one loaf of bread recipe and it is a version of my honey white bread recipe which is also on my blog it is not a sourdough recipe this one I just kind of adapted to include sourdough discard and it makes one loaf of bread but it's easily doubled and I do that all the time 
But yeah, same process as the cinnamon rolls, adding the water, the yeast, letting it bloom with a little bit of honey, and then adding the dry ingredients, mixing up a nice soft dough, and I let it rise for about an hour at room temperature and scoop it out and shape it into a loaf. Um, just spraying this with a little bit of this olive oil spray. You can also just butter the pan or, or use any kind of oil or, or use parchment um, just so it doesn't stick. And then real simple loaf. I just flatten it out to get some of the bubbles out and then roll it up into a nice tight little loaf shape that fits in my pan. And this is really just like, don't stress about this process because once you get it squished into the pan, it's going to rise and it'll be beautiful. So I think some people really worry about this particular part of bread making based on feedback and comments I've gotten. And you don't have to worry. Just it's really simple. Just squish it out, roll it up and put it in the pan and cover it up. Give it about 40 minutes or so. It really depends on how warm your kitchen is, but you want it to come about an inch above the pan and it'll spring up quite a bit in the oven as you'll see. So then I gotta put it in the oven and get all these dogs out of the way. <laughs> they love to lay in front of the warm oven. And there you go. After about 30 minutes in the oven, it is beautiful sandwich loaf, all puffed and golden. It's such a good one. And then I just pull it out while it's still pretty hot so it doesn't steam in that pan and let it cool there next to those cute little muffins. And here it is. I did slice into it a little warm. I usually try to resist, even though it's hard to resist warm bread. It just slices better if, um, if it's cool. But I had some kids waiting for bread, so I was like, well, might as well slice into it. And also I wanted to show this on this video. And yeah, there it is. Beautiful, soft, sourdough discard sandwich bread. Easily doubled. You can make one loaf for now, stick one in the freezer. I hope you'll give this one a try. And I hope you enjoyed this video. It was really fun for me to share these three. Really, they're like an everyday sourdough discard recipe for us. I mean, I don't make these three things every day, but I make them so often. I mean, at least each of them I make once a week, at least sometimes more than that. And they're just really special homemade family recipes in my family. And I hope that they will become that for you. They're all linked down below. Thank you so much for watching.